G'day everybody, welcome to another week of Aussie Tech Heads. This is episode 636 and it's recorded live in front of a, uh, uh, I was going to say live studio audience, but in front of a live Facebook audience on the 13th of June 2019. I'm your host Glenn Goodman, welcome to another week of uh, fun and frivolity <laughs> and we're going to talk a bit of tech news as well. Uh, so uh, we are brought to you by ATH Web Hosting and if I push the buttons correctly we'll we'll get some pictures this week there we go athwebhosting.com.au where you can uh, all the servers operate on ssd drives and they immediate activation ssl certificates aussie support uh, domain registration easy install wordpress joomla and drupal and also startnewcompany.com.au if you're after a company you may want to move from a registered business name to a company proprietary limited where well, you can register it right here at startnewcompany.com.au fast easy and direct with as with asic all docs provided and i have a have it on good authority that if you get in before the first of july there's a i think the asic fees are going up 1st of July, so you better hurry up, get in there, get involved, only by seven bucks, uh, alright, and also Aussie Bite, so Aussie Bite, Jace with his clock faces, uh, if you want a clock face, he has given us a discount, all the little tech heads out there listening, ATH19, ATH19, gives you a 33% off uh, of the clock faces in the Fitbit app gallery, if you have one of those devices, then you want a, a uh, clock face like that, that Jace has made. ATH19. All right. Now, you, what else? What else have I got to tell you guys? Uh, you can get us live on the Facebook every week, around about 7 p.m. Thursday night, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and uh, look, I've got to put a, probably a sticky post up about the call-ins one of these days. But uh, we'll go through those later on. You should know them by now. Uh, AussieTechRadio.com. Uh, go there if you want to have listen to some wall to wall podcasting, some Aussie some Aussie tech podcasting, not just this show but other shows around Australia. And you can like us at facebook.com forward slash Aussie tech ads, youtube.com forward slash Aussie tech ads, and the uh, paper or the well, there is a paper actually as well, Aussie tech forward slash paper, and the show notes are at Aussie tech ads.com.au forward slash podcast. All right, what have we got in store for you this week? We have got plenty, and to help get get us through is Joe. Hey, Joe, how you going? Yeah, good, thanks, Len. That's good. What have you been up to this this fine week? Um, I've been doing a bit of painting around the house this week, you know. Right, painting is always no good. I don't like it, but it has to be done <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, someone's got to do it. And doing a bit of uh, painting around the house, a bit of renovation, so... That's um, getting a bit of a paint lift, face lift. Mm. You should paint that wall behind you like a green, like the 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 uh, you know the um, the green that you can use so you can overlay it with images. Yeah, I have got a green cloth for that. I haven't put it up yet. Yeah, I've got a green cloth somewhere. <laughs> but because of this, the way my this this little room here is orientated now, it just doesn't work because I haven't got a wall behind me. I've got the actual walkway behind me. So it just doesn't work in this little room, uh, but all right. Well, let's uh, let's just jump in and, and see what's been going on. It's uh, there's not too much around this week, although I don't know if you guys were interested. Did you all go and watch the Apple event? Did you all go and watch the replay of Tim Cook launches thousand uh, dollar stand? I hope so. But uh, look, I was talking to Michael from the Aussie Mac Zone because I was you know I was all ready to bag it out. And he goes, now don't get too excited about bagging out the apple, as he, as he does. And I said, why? Well, how can you justify a $1,000 stand, you know, for a monitor? And he said, basically, he said, well, look, you know, you're looking at these, the computers, they're what, from 5000 upwards. The, the screens can be 4000 upwards. And he says, like, like say, uh, movie studios or whatever, this is what these machines and monitors are built for. They're built for absolutely high end. He said, you know, when you say you've got a budget of, if you're a movie studio and each computer's going to cost you, say, 20 grand, well, a $1,000 for a stand is, that's, that's where it's aimed at. And I said, yeah, okay, well, I can, I can handle that. But, uh, you know, then why are they why, why uh, bring it out at a consumer sort of meet? But anyway, that's the, that's the Michael's reasoning behind it from the Aussie Max Zone. So we'll, uh, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. I can see the rationale. But uh, it's way too much for me. It's, uh, did you watch the replay, Joe? No, no, I didn't Give watch it. Give it a miss? No, I haven't watched it, no. Uh, you got it on before you, before you watch the, your next soccer game. You'll be watching the Apple event, though. I can just well, see. That's, well, that's, that's for sure because the soccer, uh, not the soccer ruse. I was going to say the soccer ruse. The Matildas are playing tomorrow morning at 2 a.m. Right. And you're up for that? Oh, I'm going to be up for that, yeah. Right, right. So how do you plan for that? Do you just, just wake up or do you have to sleep today or do you do any well, planning? Well, not really. I mean, I just wait up for it. 
right? And then have a big sleep in tomorrow. Pretty much. Good stuff. Sounds good. Yeah. Do you have like chips and stuff? You get right into it. Nah, <laughs> a little party. Not, not much into it. I do have a couple, a couple of cups of coffee and a few biggies and yeah, the works. Nice. Nice, nice. Well, <clears throat> well, while you while you're uh, doing that, you can, the rest of us will be dreaming about the future, and we'll be dreaming about uh, flying cars and you know the Jetsons and all this sort of stuff. Well, this also might be coming to a bit more of a reality as Uber has selected Melbourne to be the test flying taxi service capital, so to speak. So it's, it's going to be the first international test site um, for the test testing of these flying taxi services so previously uh, Dubai was chosen as the first test site outside the US uh, for its Uber Air service but reopened its request for proposals last month after some sort of hiccup and delay over in Dubai so Melbourne's got the nod Uber said it will begin test flights of the I keep looking at that. When, every time I've read this today, I've read it as Uber will uh, begin test flights of the pointless aircraft but it's pilotless aircraft in Melbourne and other US cities and LA in 2020 before commercial operations begin in 2023. Geez, that's a bit too bit too close. Here I am worried about just normal drones and stuff falling out of the sky. What I mean, the whole, whole bloody aeroplane fell out of the sky on you. Yeah, uh, but, marina. yeah it sure is. <laughs> yeah, I've got a little picture here of one of them, I think. Or, you know, an image of what it's going to look like. Yeah, there it is. How do you like that? It's only a cartoony sort of thing, but anyway, it's uh, it's a bit like it looks. It's a bit opaqueish looking that that image of the plane there. It's like the Wonder Woman plane, you know, when it was invisible. So, you know, it looks a bit, looks a bit like a drone, like a big sized drone. Yeah, and it's got like the the drone uh, blades, like I guess, on the top. So I suppose it's just a it's a, just a massive drone, massive blades, and two or three people can jump inside it. I don't know how safe that'd be, but obviously they're going to go through all the testing. Uh, the test flight will transport passengers from one of seven Westfield shopping centres in Melbourne to the city's main international airport. I don't know if I'd be happy with that flying over me, eh? The 19-kilometre journey from the central business district to the airport is expected to take about 10 minutes from air. Uh, if you do that in the car, it'll take about 25. So a bit of a, you know, a bit of a, uh, a cut down there of time. But I guess as long as as far as as well as people, you've also got everyone's baggage. So you know, geez, they must be able to... Yeah, I'm sure they'll do the testing. The electric on-demand air taxis can be ordered by customers through the smartphone app in the same way that you order your Uber car. Uh, Uber's planned air fleet includes electric jet-powered vehicle, part helicopter, part drone, and part things, fixed-wing aircraft, uh, running multiple small rotors capable of both vertical takeoff and landing and rapid horizontal flight. We've got Peter Vino um, on the Facebook feed saying that we've got no Facebook audio. Oh, okay. Well, that's no good. Let me have a look. Um, all right, well, I'll just keep going. When you do your story, Joe, I'll have a look at that. Okay. Right. Uh, the CSA spokesman Peter Gibson said that the list of challenges for the Uber was a long one. He said the company would have to get a safety certifi- uh, certification for the new battery operated aircraft, which does not exist yet. The airspace they would use would have to be managed by authorities. The people operating the aircraft would need specialised training and infrastructure for the mini airports does not yet exist. Uh, the regional general manager of Uber Eats, Jody Orster, conceded the day of pilotless flight were a long way off. There's a lot of work to do. I'm sure there is. An urban uh, ride-sharing network in the sky does not happen overnight, she goes. So, um, yes, so that's what's coming on. So 2023, bit of a stretch, I don't know. It's not far off, not far off at all. But, uh, I don't know, what, what do you think about pilotless aircraft, Joe? you be happy if one flying over your house? Well, not really. I mean, I, I wouldn't be too keen getting into, into a car that's you know, without, without a driver in it either. No, well, that's right, I'm not... Too, too excited about the whole thing either <laughs> but I, I guess that's you know I suppose you know when you look at people when the car was invented there was a horse and cart and uh, people probably didn't like the car did they you know going oh this is dangerous look at this there's no animal there's no instinct in the actual vehicle or whatever blah 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 so I suppose it's just all just progress I suppose you've got to get used to it Joe yeah, yeah. I guess so I mean that'll, it'll be something you know happen down the line they'll get it right eventually mm, yeah well hopefully Hopefully, uh, all right. Will you give us a give us one of your stories, Joe? And I'll see if I can check out this Facebook stuff. Okay. Well, earlier on in the week, I posted on my Facebook page about Huawei. Um, they've got an alternative 
uh, OS um, said to be uh, uh, in the works because of the issues that they're having there with the US restricted uh, companies um, that will be working with Huawei. Um, that was seen by many as um, some sort of a, a, a trade war. So um, especially with Google was involved, they're using the operating system there. Yeah. Yeah, I think, look, that's all happening over there in the US. And I think uh, I haven't been following it too closely. I think that Facebook's fixed now, by the way, everyone. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think that Huawei stuff is, uh, yeah, that's all going on. The China trade war, as they're calling it. I haven't been really following it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I saw a notice that Foxconn said that they're able to make all their iPhone devices and parts and their et cetera outside of China. So it must be just be like just... China's the big bad bogey, and uh, everyone's just ditching China, or well, the US at least, anyway. Well, that's right. The US is, is having a big, um, big field day with uh, Huawei, um, but Huawei, you know, being Huawei, have uh, swung into Plan B, and they started making their own operating system. Right. But how how successful so is that going to be? Well, well, so far they reckon that um, they've got companies like um, Oppo and Vivo interested they've sent a, a few people around with a couple of their phones to test a new operating system that Huawei's building right yeah and um, so the, you know Huawei and Vivo they're like a big company up there in China so they take a lot of the Chinese market mm. so um, and the, what they've also done is they've shipped Huawei shipped over a million devices r around the world for testing so they're, they're pretty keen mm. look I guess look I guess like just because China so massive isn't it like over a billion people that like they if they could get a their own android or their own operating system up and running massive massive audience for it you know like i don't know what android's audience is worldwide say bar china these days that right existing right now but say but say it's at a billion but then so then potentially you've got a billion in china so it wouldn't really matter too much to Huawei if they got outside of China or not. They'd be all happy using their little Huawei operating systems inside China and wouldn't know the difference. Yeah, look, I suspect that something like this would is going to happen. You know, would you just sit back and let you know, the, the likes of Google and, and and so forth tell you what to do? Well, no, no, well, that's right. So, so this new operating system is based on based on um, Android, sort of. You know, that, that's the backbone of it. Hmm. And um, it's supposed to work with all Android apps as well, the new operating system that they're releasing. Uh, but it's also got increased protection uh, and personal data protection built into it. So it's a bit more, you know, what would you call it, more, more secure and more so, um, safe yeah. that way? Yeah, yeah, you, could, you, you might be able to say that. <laughs> Everything's open to hacking these days. But, yeah, I guess two heads are better than one, yeah. Yeah, so apparently they're saying that, um, you know, they've got um, no intention of lying, back, lying down and, and taking it from the, the US government. They're just going to go out there and they're going to continue running Huawei and keep making phones and they're going to use this new operating system. Yeah. And, and for them, they've already got, you know, the, the likes of Oppo and Vivo on board. Mm. So... Well, I know. think I think the problem with the, the Huawei, though, was that it was actually... It's not a... Well, they were actually they're coming under scrutiny for security issues, as in like you know that the US or whatever think that the, maybe that the Chinese government got back end into these phones and are spying on people, like in the West. I think that's more that's what the, the whole Huawei issue is. But the uh, the trade war is, is is I think is different to what this issue is. That, that's right. I mean, the, the, the trade war is in, in in the sense that they don't want them to, to to use any Huawei equipment. I mean, as you know, Huawei at the moment has got the, the 5G uh, for the mobile broadband coming out, and they've got all the chips and everything, and they're, they're supposed to be a lot cheaper than the than the than the other companies that are making them. Mm. Yeah. So, um, you know, with with that in mind, the, you know, the 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 they're trying to sort of you know still still make make it through the the 5g i mean and send it through around the world but in, in their own phones they're just probably going to run a different os and, and mm. i thought that was going to happen in the end anyway yeah well you're probably right because like i think you know i think as as just as the beast of china it just wants to control everything uh it can't probably control like it the Huawei stuff made in china for china it's going to be 
you know, spied on in and out, left, right and centre, you would imagine. <laughs> you know, they want to know everything. But, uh, yeah, so, and I guess they couldn't control it as that much as if it was with the Android. But that was the problem, you know, that uh, Google was facing and Apple was facing. They want to move into China, but they've got all these rules and restrictions and stuff. You know, you can't do this, you can't do that. And show us how to do this, show us how to do that. And that and that uh, that copyright or the, the uh, intellectual property was also a big factor in all this trade war business going on but uh but yeah so uh but that that'd be interesting i'd have a look at that os that should look should hopefully be all right well they reckon it's 60 percent um faster than your, your standard android system so right. if it's 60 percent faster i mean that's got to be a good thing too it makes it more um, more quicker to, to to use more and uh more um efficiently as well did you tell us what it was going to be called uh, they said that the, the, they're going to have a code name for, called Hong Meng, M-E-N-G O-S, but when it's actually released to the market, they're going to call it ARK, A-R-K O-S, ARK O-S. Hmm, interesting. All right, I wonder what's behind that. There'd be some some reasoning behind ARK, wouldn't there? Like the ARK gives you, it brings the different images to your mind, and they might be like, you know, maybe uh, the OS that's... Uh, uh, in battle by around the world and we're building the ark don't let anyone else in this is ours or the, the saviour of the operating system so who knows uh, but yeah all good Joe that's good have you got any anything else with that one no that's all it alright lovely now let's oh I've got a one here and if I can just move that there so I can start reading it uh, yes where will we go <laughs> it's the Microsoft unveils the next Xbox now, this apparently is going to be called, well, at the moment, it's Project Scarlet, which is set to hit the stores during late 2020. So this device apparently will be four times more powerful than the Xbox One X console and be powered by none other than AMD chips, uh, they said in the Xbox E3 conference in LA. So the console will show up to 120 frames per second, which apparently is twice the average TV. So uh, that's good. If you've got a 120 frame TV, include a solid state drive, probably about time. Uh, they said uh, allowing games to load much faster than on its older mechanical hard drives. The latest version of the Halo video game will be launched alongside with the console. The Microsoft said the gaming stream, streaming service Project X Cloud would go into preview in October. Now, I'm not sure if we've spoken about the X Cloud before, but I know we spoke about the Google streaming, the Google game streaming uh, system that's coming around. And uh, uh, so what that is, is pretty much like you've just got your controller and the controller hooks straight into the internet and that allows you to play your games, which is quite cool. Uh, so a new feature though, getting back to this Microsoft one, a new feature will allow users to stream games directly from their own console instead of the Microsoft server. Two months ago we connected all Xbox, de- this is Microsoft speaking, two months ago we connected all Xbox developers to Project X Cloud. Uh, now the console streaming service will turn your Xbox into your own personal and free X Cloud server. So I can see the uh, I can see the excitement over that. Yeah that sounds pretty good, I mean especially Make a lot of people go out and buy an Xbox. Mm. That's what it's yeah, well, you know, like even even the, uh, in you know last year or so, when the kids were a bit younger and right into the Minecraft, I built built a, a, a Minecraft server. There's nothing like you know being able to control your own world. That's good. Did, did it mention <laughs> anything about free, free streaming services? Because I, I think I vaguely remember reading somewhere that they're offering free uh, streaming services for, um, or, or, or or something like that. Oh, I don't know about that streaming as in what say like what sort of like games you mean yeah that's sort of this they're giving people free data free um not data free streaming services free movies or something like that i can't remember now what it was yeah i think i I, yeah so i think what's going to happen is i think they've got this well the xbox live uh or the xbox gold or whatever it is that's going to probably morph into yeah where you can just pay your yearly fee well they've got it now you can it's xbox xbox on demand or something you pay some yearly or monthly fee and you can just play whatever game you want and okay uh, well that's probably what they were talking about maybe they're thinking about giving that away for free yeah right right yeah well that'll be big uh so that looks like it's all all going to happen there so that's going into preview in october so you'd imagine that's going to be a little while off yet but um yeah it's all moving in the in the in the games world isn't it i think uh playstation said they're 
they've sort of had to uh, pull their finger out and they're coming up with something as well uh, to keep up with everything. But uh, Xbox seems to be the way to go. Like, we've got Xboxes. They work all right. I'm not sure what made us go there that way rather than PlayStation, but that's the way we ended up. That's the way we're going to... That's the way we start. That's the way we die. You never change platforms, do you, Joe? You always stick with the one you started with. All right. What else you got, Joe? Um, well, here's something really interesting for the soccer fans out there. La Liga um, app is uh, being listened uh, is been listening in on fans to catch uh, bars illegally streaming soccer. <laughs> right. Yeah. So the Spain's uh, data protection agency has fined the country's league. La Liga, 250,000 euros. Um, it says that um, it's violated the EU data privacy and transparency laws. Now, what, what they what they did is it's it's a basically an app, and um, which uses um, for uh, keeping track of games and stats. Right. And um, as you were using it on the phone, the microphone and the GPS tracks bars illegally streaming um, soccer games. It's like using uh, Shazam technology where the app would record the audio and identify soccer games and then with the geolocation of the phone um, via the GPS it would locate where the bars are Jeez. and um, who was streaming uh, the game illegally. So what what is the La Liga app? La Liga is like our, our, our version of the A-League Oh, right. Okay, and right. Or the Serie A or the Premier League. La Liga is uh, the Spanish version of uh, their competition. Right, so the La Liga app. So so I've got that in my pocket, just in, on the phone, and then when I go out, it's listening to what the pub has on the TV. Pretty much. Right. So, But if it's the soccer... Okay, so, yeah, so not necessarily I'd be watching it on the phone. I'd be going out to watch it at the pub. That's right, yeah. So yeah. you're watching the pub, you've got the, the app happening in your phone. Um, the Jeez, pub's uh, streaming an illegal version of the, the La Liga uh, game. Mm. So this thing here, using some sort of Shazam type technology, um, records the audio and the geolocation um, is set up by the, the GPS within the phone and they know who's, you know, they put two and two together and they know which, which places are, are streaming the illegal content. Right. And has this caused any problems? Well, we don't know yet. It doesn't actually say that, but it does say that, that they've been fined by the authorities mm. um, for, um, for doing this because it's... Well, I'll go back a step and I'll say that the league claims that the app does ask for permission to access the phone's microphone and the location, and that the data which is received by um, by the, the app is uh, received as a code, not as an, in an audio format. Hmm. So it's only used to detect um, La Liga streams. Yeah, right. So it obviously must be a problem. It's obviously a problem for them to go down this path. But um, well, the pubs could just hit back and go, all right, everyone put their phones in the basket at the door. And, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, if you want free footy, well, phone's off. Well, you know, I, th I guess basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to catch out people who are streaming illegally, you know what I mean? Like you might mm. have a service at home and then you might be um, streaming it through to your TV at work, you know, in the pub or something like that. Well, I think that was sort of made famous over here. Remember when these two guys were streaming the Mundine fight live on Facebook? That was only right. It was yeah. only available on Foxtel. That's and, right. Yeah, and I, I just because I was watching on Facebook, I thought, well, why not? And the, the guy was just just had his camera in front of the uh, the TV, just just restreaming, just recording the TV, and it was good. It was good. And then like he, he had, had something like one hundred and fifty thousand people viewing it. And then while he was doing it, he heard the the phone. The, you could hear the phone ring, and he get jumped on the phone and said, "Hello," and it was Foxtel. And Fo because Fox and Foxtel's there going, uh, turn it off. And he's going, no. They say we well, got to turn it off. You can't, you can't stream it. And he goes, well, I've got one hundred fifty thousand people relying on me. <laughs> it was a very funny exchange, and um, I think the way that Foxtel 
sort of cottoned on who it was was uh, you could see a little code flash up on the bottom of the screen so obviously each box each foxtel box must have had a code that they they triggered and then when that box code come up they went okay that number blah 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 blah, and they checked out who's got that box and then bang and phoned him up but yeah it's a it's all go all systems go that's funny that how they got how they did that this one here this one here actually the the app actually tells you and it explains to you that in the terms of the service when you download the app that um, you're consenting to La Liga for using your phone to detect fraudulent behavior, uh, like at soccer games. So um, people probably don't read the fine print, but it, mm. what they're saying is that we, we have told you that we're going to do this, yeah. and so you should know. Um, but they were fined because the, um, the app didn't actually make it clear enough right, right. To, to the people who were um, using the app that this was going to happen. And so it was an infringement of their privacy and whatever else. But I guess, like, realistically, you know, that little thing in the, the fine print, even if it was in big bold print, you know, as soon as you open the app, uh, if you're in the soccer, is that really, is that going to stop? If you, are you going to worry about the old mate down the pub? You know, you're going to stop, is that going to stop you from putting the app on your phone? Probably not. No way. You know, you know if, when I want to watch a soccer, game of soccer and I don't, you know, I can't see it for whatever reason, like whether it's on Optus or whether it's on Foxtel or it's not broadcasted on SBS, you, the, you don't know the, the lengths that people go to to try and find it online. Mm. Oh, I'm sure they do. Yeah, I know. There's whole sites dedicated to, to streaming sports, you know. Like, yes, I know. <laughs> but most of well, you get most of your soccer games online, like through Optus or whatever, SBS or whatever. Yeah, no, all mine are legit. I've got both Optus and Foxtel. Yeah. Um, so I'll get all mine legit. But I'm just saying that there's a lot of people out there who haven't got one or the other. Yep. Who they they um they might download something like Cody and and find the um the game that way. Oh look, I look, I did the tried to find sports and stuff on Cody and like you can sit down for hours and I did. I sat down for hours and hours trying to find a stream of something or other and you just just dead end dead end bad bad apps bad apps bad apps. You can't do it. And you think you might as well just go pay twenty bucks. Or whatever it is, go to the pub, pay twenty bucks, go and have a few beers, and just be able to watch without the the stress of it all. And like, because things are getting that cheap. You know, I was just thinking about Netflix and Stan and all that. It's that cheap now, like ten bucks a month. Why do you bother with trying to get it for free? It's ten well, bucks a right. month. It's, it's a lot harder these days than what it used to be. You know, going back maybe five or ten years ago, it was so easy to find stuff online. Um, but now, with even with like with torrents and so forth, it's just so hard. Um, for anyone to find anything because it just gets cut down straight away. Mm. Sites are closed down. Yeah, yeah, they're onto it. They're onto it. They're onto it. Now, uh, look, here's some here's a uh, some interesting one, an interesting one. Miller Light Beer. So I think I think you can get Millers over here. It's probably more uh, an American beer, seeing that it's made in Tennessee. But the Miller Light Beer can is also a video game controller. You go, hey, what? <laughs> I hear everyone say. So Miller Coors are getting into the gaming at the E3 2019 with the introduction of the Can Troller, a full can of Miller Lite that's also a Bluetooth gamepad. It'll be on display and available to win. And that's the only way you're going to be able to get a, your hands on one is you've got you to go and play this Eric Andre in Los Angeles last week. It's all over, but it's last week. You have to play him and beat him. And then you know, give you one of these... Can, the gamepad Miller cans. There's only 200 of them, apparently. I think I might have a picture of the can. There we go. Uh, the game controls are on... Yeah, so it's a Miller's can filled with light beer, straight from the Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The game controls are on the side of the can, all arranged with flat membrane buttons that don't affect the profile of the can itself. It's as simple as you can get, just a direction pad and four face buttons, uh, pretty much in like the Nintendo controllers. Uh, in that configuration, the direction pad and start and select buttons are completely flat with cl- that click inwards. Uh, the face buttons are slightly raised. The battery pack and Bluetooth transmitter is mounted on the bottom of the can with a small ribbon cable running to the membrane panel within the control. So, this isn't a retail product, yeah, blah blah blah. Now, the guy from PC Mag did a review on this, and I'll just read you what he said. He says, I tried it out with the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive collection on Steam, and I can say it definitely works as a gamepad. I played Sonic the Hedgehog Hedgehog with a beer can. It wasn't comfortable because membrane controls are second only to touchscreen controls in terms of bad platforming inputs, but it worked. If 
It even showed up in the Windows Bluetooth menu as Miller Light Can, which is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. No, this isn't a good controller. Of course it isn't a good controller. Look at it. It only has a few buttons. It's a beer can. Um, I also can't recommend drinking the beer... You can't recommend. I also can't recommend drinking the beer inside because to avoid any sticky, stale beer smell, you might want to rinse it out after. And I don't think the electronics bear ribbon cable and open micro USB port are IP rated. But as it's still an amazing controller because it's so strange and unique, I'd keep the beer inside it. To be honest, go and buy go and buy another one, drink that, and just keep that one in in full go so you can keep playing it. Yeah, but that's pretty funny. Miller's Light, cool. That'd be good, like, if they could, uh, if they, oh, I suppose you could, even that didn't work. It's a good little marketing promotion sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good yeah. idea. I mean, it, 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 you know, as, a, as a giveaway even, you know, like as a, a promotional thing, you're right, yeah. Well, yeah, because, like, that's something that no one's seen before. You've got us talking about it all the way over here, and it's just, it's cool. I like it. It's just like those guys at Microsoft, I think it was, uh, we spoke about, they're not giving away T-shirts as much anymore and just, and things like that, even my socks. Because like the T-shirt you throw in your cupboard, which who doesn't, and you just never wear it again. But socks you can put on every day, with or you know after you wash them. But every day you put your socks on, and you can see Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft. So yeah, so socks. That's that's the new that's the that's the new thing. Uh, all right, Joe. What else have you got in your little black book? Okay. Well, what's going to be happening um, soon is that Google is ending integration between Google Photos and the Drive, Google Drive. They're ending it, did you say? Yeah, the integration, the syncing between Google Photos and oh, Google Drive. What's that good? Why? Um, it's they they put an end to it because it's people are saying that it's just too hard and too confusing to have those photos synced between the drive and the, and, and Google Photos. Right. So, yes. Yeah, so as of July, the photos and videos that you um, add to your drive won't be automatically appear in your photos and vice versa. Right. Well, look, that's probably not a bad thing, actually, because one of my hates is that you've got photos everywhere. So if you've got, if you upload them to Drive, you don't want them syncing to photos because now they're in two places. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, that's right. So, that, so anything that you have got um, prior to July when it changes stays the way it is. Right, but anything after July. So if you know, if you upload anything to to the drive, it stays just on the drive. Or if you just got something in photos, it just stays just in photos. It doesn't sync between them both, so it moves them both together. Right. Okay. Yep. So how do you manage your photos? Like, do you just pull them off your phone every now and then, or do you do you sync from phone to cloud every time you take a photo? What I do is I have my Google Photos backed up to my drive. So I get when I when a photo gets taken on my phone, uh, it automatically gets backed up to the drive, um, and then once a, once every year or once every two years, I I go through my phone um, and delete stuff that I'm not going to sort of really want to see, mm. but it's backed up in my drive. Right, and so that works for you, all right? There's like not many double ups. Yeah, it sort of works for me as well because at the same time, um, it, you, you you can you can access your photos from your phone on your computer rather than have to transfer them across um, but, you know but what they're saying now is that if you just upload them straight to your if you leave them on your phone it doesn't automatically upload to the drive you've got to actually upload them yourself hmm. there's a, um, an upload feature that's coming to Google Photos so that you can upload them on the site right right yeah so because I, I yeah cause I noticed uh, like when with me like I just use I don't have any photos syncing from phone to cloud uh, I just have them taken and stored on the phone and every couple of months I'll pull them off the phone put them on the computer and then they'll sync up to Google Photos and that way I can just keep a control over all these photos and I'm not doubling up everywhere all over the show and yeah so that's my way of doing it anyway yeah no, I mean I, I mean you can understand how it can get confusing and, and you know just double handling stuff yeah because like what's what's the use of a photo if you know, you you never want to sit down and look at your photos if you got them all over the place. You know, because you go, oh, everything's just such a mess, and you never sit down and look at them. But if they're in a nice structured format, uh, that's right. And the other thing as well is that people get a bit paranoid and they and they start uploading everything because they're worried about losing their phone. And that's that's half my problem. You know, I mean, like 
I'll, I'll, I'll want everything uploaded. Say, for example, if I've just been to an event or if I've just been to a party or something, I've just taken photos. Mm. And, and for whatever reason, I either lose my phone or it gets stolen or it breaks. Um, all the photos are still stuck on the phone and try and get them back you can't sometimes very hard yeah that's the thing it's very hard with a phone to retrieve photos if you've dropped the phone in the bucket of water yeah but even if the phone goes missing for example um, you, you miss you drop it in you know in the ocean or it, you've left it behind and someone's picked it up and says oh great I'll have this um, you, you lose everything mm. you know so that, that's the main reason why I, I do the sink straight away yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, yeah, that, that's uh, right. As long as you've got some sort of, I, I guess, some sort of pathway to organisation, you know, <laughs> to whatever works. Yeah, like I, I know some people, they like yourself, they just, oh, I'll back it up next week or I'll back it mm. up once a month or something like that. That's fine. I mean, that's perfectly good to do that. But, you know, like I said, what happens if you if your phone goes walkabout I know and look that has crossed my mind because I do yeah honestly like I only really back them up when the phone says oh you're nearly out of storage yeah oh okay <laughs> I'll grab all those photos off yeah, it's time right. yeah. yeah it's time um, alright uh, is that one done Joe yep sure is lovely well you, everyone knows about the website have I been pwned uh, you know where you type your web your, your email address in and then it'll bring back and tell you if your if your email has been hacked but you know, if, that, if someone's been hacked it's had your email and you know distributing your email and password and probably other details around the world uh, so have I been pwned is looking for a new owner so I didn't realize this but it was created by an Australian guy Troy Hunt uh, and at the moment he's working with KPMG to try and find an organization to acquire it uh, Troy says it's time to go from that one guy doing what he can in his available time to a better resource and better funded structure that's able to do way more than ever what may walk may <laughs> blah 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 that way to do way more than what I ever could do on my own he said there was a whole heap of organizations out there that don't know they've been breached simply because I haven't had the bandwidth to deal with it at all I'll see if I can get, uh, I'll show you how that Have I Been Pwned works, if I can remember the site. Have I Been Pwned, I'll just Google it so we can go straight away. But it's not a bad little site. I know most of you guys are probably across all this. It's uh, Have I Been Pwned, so as, it's, as it sounds, Have I Been P-W-N-E-D dot com. And then you punch your email address in, so I'll punch in my email address and because I know this has been pwned so I know and I'll, and I'll show you there you go oh no pwned so my email details were in a breach in an Adobe breach back in 2013 they're in an Apollo breach back in 2018 a bitly breach in 2014 you know goes on daily motion 2016 drop so like I've been my all these places have been hacked and then your email address has been shared and it tells you what's been compromised uh, so with say Dropbox email address password uh, with my fitness pal email address IP address password username uh, and just different things like uh, what's the latest one verifications.io I don't even know what that is February 2009 uh, oh here's a good one compromised data date of birth email address employers genders geographic location IP addresses job titles names phone numbers physical addresses and, geez th th they know more than I do about myself but, uh, but that's yeah, a good that's little good so everyone should have a look at that yeah so that's a, that is a good little site so what you do is you don't just uh, you know go looking for beers and drown your sorrows you just go so if you appear in this adobe and you go oh geez adobe hack okay then you just make sure that you go and change your password and you know and so forth so because what happens is so someone out there so someone's hacked adobe for example they've got email address passwords password hints and usernames that's what they've taken from the adobe database they've put it on the internet for sale and then you know just people just hackers or whoever nasty people they they buy these things and they just just try and use it for nefarious means attack attack trying to sign into your email address say they've got email address and password maybe that's the same password and email address you use at your bank so they'll create a little script and just go bang 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 just trying to hit just trying just trying for some pay dirt I guess just whatever floats their boat but yep so uh, yeah have I been prone to have a look at that but anyway it's for sale if you want to buy it 
I'm sure it's going to cost uh, a lot. But, uh, did I finish that story? Uh, yes, so uh, it's time to go. That's blah, blah, blah. Yes. Yes, he wanted consumer. He wants uh, Troy wants consumer searches of whether email addresses have been caught up in data breaches to remain free. He said the service became this successful because I made sure there were no barriers in the way for people searching their data, and I absolutely positively want that to remain the status quo. Uh, I was thinking while I was reading that, well, how's he going to do that if he's sold it? But then Hunt, uh, Troy has also said he intended to be part of the acquisition. That is, uh, some company gets him along with the project. So he might have a chance in saying what goes. Best of luck. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, that that is that is a good little site. And uh, everyone should go and have a look. And if you've been pwned, change your email addresses for that, that particular site. Uh, all right, what else you got going there, Joe? Well, a few, a few, you might remember a few months back, um, well, maybe more than a few months, maybe about a year back, Facebook research was shut down due to controversies uh, when the app was marketed to teens and on the iPhone, um, it actually relied on special certificates that allowed you to um, to install on the app to gain much deeper access to your phone so that they could uh, get your personal data off you. Yep. Yeah. Well, now, it, um, now once again, Facebook will begin paying people to monitor how they use their phone right. with a new app called Study. Okay. Yeah, so apparently this new app will monitor um, apps uh, that are installed on the person's phone and spends time using those apps, the country you're in, uh, the additional app data that could reveal specific features you're using, like uh, Facebook says that mm. you won't see any specific content like messages or passwords or any websites that you visit. Yeah, right. But um, they, they're, they're coming back out there to try and get some more data off you guys and, and apparently this time they're going to start paying for it. Yeah, well, uh, so so obviously this is not a scam because it's <laughs> how they going to differentiate themselves. You know, because every now and then you see on the Facebook it's, uh, you know, Mark Zuckerberg give you $300 if you do this or do that or install this or install that. That's all. Well, yeah, the thing is they don't tell you. Um, all they say is that it's going to be available for people who are 18 years old and up it's only going to be available on Android, um, where the deeper phone access can be granted by each particular user on, on a one by one basis. Mm. Um, and it opens up with a series of screens describing what type of data the app's going to collect and right. how it's going to be used. Are you one for jumping into all these things and letting, you know, you set up Windows or you set up something and it says, do you want to send anonymous data to us? Do you, are you one to send that sort of stuff? I never allow it. No, I don't either. I'm not worried about the from maybe not from the privacy point of view. I just think they can get stuff using my bandwidth. <laughs> so well, it's, not, it's not so much that. It's just that I mean, you know, you can't stop it from happening. But the the less they they get off you, the better. You know. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think that's that's right at the end of the day. And I think yeah, the world. Look, I'm not a big you know nut job about privacy. I think you know most of it. It, it only comes. It's only your privacy pretty much only breached by so or known to the rest of the world as if something peculiar might happen to you you know and then you start then agencies and all these other things start piecing together uh, say the history just of you but just normal you go through your life you know, you're just in the your little bit of data it's just in a big pond of other zeros and ones isn't it really well that's right I mean and then and then you've got the companies like I said uh, earlier on with La Liga doing stuff like you know recording without you know all that sort of information and, and, and there's a whole heap of other things happening. I mean, well, I do those you, too much. You know what I mean? So the less they know, the better. I just say no. Don't have that information. Uh, yeah, I know Google's are. Uh, look, look, <laughs> I'm probably doing something similar with Google. Could you know how Google does those surveys and they pay you to do surveys? Yeah, I, 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 was, I was into that once and then I stopped. Yeah, like they only give me. What is it? It's, they might ask you uh, how old you are and if you're male or female, and depends how you answer. You might only get ten cents out of them, but like it, it adds up. Like I've I bought a few apps because it, it credits the Play Store, and so yeah, I think over what two years since I've had the little Xiaomi. Oh no, it's over only a year. I've probably I've probably earned about forty bucks just by doing it. But you know, they certainly know a lot about me. If I got a mortgage, yeah, right. um, is, or do is here, it or... how they ask questions about you in particular, rather than asking generic type questions? Mm. Well, I noticed that maybe they're starting to get a bit more specific, but um, 
I don't know. I'll take the ten cents. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Um. Any more with that one, Joe? That's that's about. No. Um, the only thing that I was going to add to that is that uh, Facebook doesn't say how much they're going to pay people, um, to to use this data and this service. Right. And um, not everyone can uh, sign up for the study for this mm. study. The only way you're going to be able to get it, apparently, is that you get um, targeted through you via an ad campaign. A campaign. Right, right. And if you see the ad pop up on your screen, then you click on it and then you can sign up. So I don't mm. think it's something you can actually download. Because, you know, like when you do, when you get into like the Google ads, the AdWords and so forth, which is where you uh, you pay to get your ad, you know, in, up on the top of the page in the ad section, the paid yeah. ads. Like yeah. when you start targeting, when you start looking at the back end of the, where you you know program it all, and you say, okay, what can I target the demographics and whatnot? Like you can drill down, and it, it goes down to like what people earn. So you can tick on or off, you know, different bands of income. So you can tick on or off, you know, maybe zero to twenty thousand, twenty one thousand to fifty thousand, fifty one thousand to a hundred thousand, so on. So you can go on and off in those bands. Like, how does I understand that you've got a Gmail address, which is Google, but I don't know if I've ever answered questions like that. You know, like, do I tell Google in setting up my account how much I earn? But um, They'd probably get that data from a third party, you know, somewhere. Might do. Might, maybe one of those surveys I've, <laughs> I've done. <laughs> maybe that's it how... Could it... Be, it could well be. And, and otherwise, they guesstimate. I mean, they, they might say, okay, are you employed? Okay, this guy's employed. He's doing this sort of job. He's within this price range. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, because you can get they can the data that exists. Like when you start looking at that AdWords, let's say like obviously sex location down to about the town or the general area. Uh, yeah, your income. Uh, what else is there? There's just a whole raft of yeah, just uh, different male, female. The ones I've seen also tells you what operating system. Yep. you what kind of phone you're using. Where are you? Yes. Um, Roughly what time? Yes, you know, a whole heap of things get into get into it. Yes, yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing. It really is amazing. Uh, yeah. So maybe Facebook just wants to try and just build up their database of stuff like that as well of of stats about people so they can target you better. Um, but it says what they say. Did you, did you say about the participants will have to have a PayPal account? So you get paid into the PayPal. You have to be over eighteen. That's um, right. You have to have a PayPal account. They pay you via your PayPal account. Uh, you have to be over eighteen. Um, basically, um, it, it doesn't link any. Um, uh, the, the, this, this, this app um, won't link to any other account, and it's, it's not going to be used mm. uh, to target you with ads or anything like that. It's just for them to get their information, and yep. they're going to pay you for it. But the thing is, it doesn't tell you how much they're going to pay pay you. No. And, not not everybody can get it apparently it's just you know by invitation well i did that i signed up for that workspaces from facebook and oh my god i wish i'd never well i did i I signed up for everything sorry what was that like well rubbish because it just keeps annoying me with emails (laughs) Oh, and so right. I did, I hate it already. Like I wasn't I wasn't ready just to dive in straight away and start using it. So I sign up to you know you sign up to everything under the sun as it comes past your desk. Get thinking, oh, I'll have a look at that later. Have a look at that later. So I signed up with uh, this workspace thing. I thought, oh yeah, I'll have a look at that later. But oh my god, like the emails I kept getting from it. And so eventually I just had to go and say, just shut it, shut me down. I'm sick of you, sick of you. I don't care what it does now. I'm over it. That's right. Yeah. But um, yeah, let's uh, we'll finish off with your last one, Joe. You got another one, I I believe. I do. Um, they're coming out soon with the thirty-two gigabytes DDR four RAM. Um, Sweet. Yeah, so that that's going to be pretty good. Um, it's 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 uh, in production, and uh, vendors are preparing to release the product later on in the year. And according to the reports from Tom's Hardware and Anatech. Uh, the supply of 16 gigabyte chips um, is, is fairly fairly large at the moment, and um, what they do is they integrate that run. into the 32 gigabit memory module. Yeah, right. Nice. And we're going to get a uh, little video here in a minute. Is it, where's this Tech Republic? They got a lot of ads going on. I'll yeah. Skip, I'll skip that. So the idea is that you know, out of you know one or two SIM um, SIM slots. Um, 
you know, you can get a lot more RAM out of it. Mm. Now, um, there's a bit of advice here saying that before you upgrade, check the Intel website to ensure that your system is compatible with the higher speeds and the density of the RAM. Right, right. Yeah, that yeah. video doesn't look like it's down to us much. Well, the Intel documentation covers theoretical limits. Some older motherboards may not be supported by the high RAM, mm. uh, or they may require just a BIOS update to, to, to make it work. Oh, BIOS updates. Did you do those, Joe? You know what? I haven't done one for ages. I'm always scared. I don't like them. <laughs> Oh, no, no, it's okay. Yes. I think they're a bit easier these days. They used to be a bit, uh, a bit head scratchy in the old days, but I think that's they've written software and it stuff now it makes it pretty easy. But but still, it doesn't matter. I'm I'm still wary. Still wary of the BIOS update. Yeah, I, I do all my updates. I mean, I've got the I got my uh, wireless router and it, and it popped up saying, "Oh, there's an update for your wireless router." Oh, that right. stuff I'll do. So I went and did that. Yeah, I don't do motherboard updates unless I have to. Unless something happens where something and, and, and then and that's that's the only time you will do them unless you have to. I mean something's not working right. Mm. Normally there's a fix for it, and that's when you do it. I mean I don't think I've ever done an update on the motherboard for for years. Yeah, <laughs> it's no. I've bricked a couple, but <laughs> if I'm doing the, the wrong thing, but, uh, oh, back in the old days, you know, the good old days of blown things up. <laughs> Truly blown things up. But funny. Um, yeah. All right. So that's cool. So the. Yeah, DDR4 UDIMs, cool. Yeah, so that, yeah, you look out for that later on in the year. Um, and like I said, just make sure you check all the um, the details on on the on the website, saying whether it'll be compatible with your system. You mm. know, you may require a, a, an update on the on the motherboard to make yeah. it work. Yes, yes, that's right. Well, you know, breathe life, old, new life into an old motherboard, and update the BIOS. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good stuff. Uh, yeah, that's great, Joe. I think uh, that's uh, pretty much completed everything that we had this week, which has been good. Yep, sure has. Yeah, so th there's nothing else to report. So I think in that case, we'll sign off. Um, so what's been hap what's happening this week? Nothing I can think of that's that's important. <laughs> we'll just be back next week. Oh no, uh, we won't be. Uh, I think it's Jason Will's turn next week oh, okay yep yeah, that's good yep yeah. and uh that's that's hopefully they can do it because i've got a uh otherwise engagement so so hopefully they can do it otherwise we'll be in trouble but um yeah i'll talk to those but that's probably what's happening next week so yeah cool so thanks for coming in joe no worries man thanks for thanks for your stories and uh dedication to the to the cause and uh no, thanks for good, i enjoy doing it good stuff good on you and thanks to everyone else out there watching on the facebook you catch us each week uh thursday nights maybe not next week with uh will and jace because uh but that they'll if they're going to go live they'll post on the facebook what time and when it's all going to happen um thanks pete who thanks pete on the on the facebook sanders how you going sanders michelle michelle how you, get, how you going steve david abood central and Jason, and yeah, 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 oh, and the rest of them. All right, good on you. Thanks a lot. We'll see you when we see you, probably in a couple of weeks, okay? Till then, it's bye for now. Go the Sharks. Bye-bye. See ya.